It is always full of entertainment and we've got it to look forward to on Sunday. Another North London derby. This time it's at Tottenham as they take on their fierce rivals, Arsenal. Let's hear from Mikel Arteta, but first, Antonio Conte. They are the first uh, in, uh, in the Premier League. They are at the top, top of the table. and uh, But especially they are deserving to stay in this, uh, in this position. Uh, it's not for lucky, but because... Uh, in every game, they show it to be a really good team, a really strong team, um, a, a team that uh, show to be solid. You know? I just love it. That's the reason why we are here to play these kind of games. Um, it's one of the biggest games of the season for us. Um, we know how much it means right now for us um, on the table and uh, how much it means to our people as well. But uh, we just have to focus on, on playing well and and doing what we have to do to win the game. Well, it is a massive game. We love the North London derby. Everyone looking forward to this one. I wonder how different the feeling will be for Arsenal coming into this match this time round, though, Karen, up against Tottenham, away from home this time, mm. top of the table, potentially heading towards a first title in a really long time. Tim doesn't want to hear it. Um, <laughs> he's made me laugh. Um, yeah, the, there's definitely um, the confidence, a feel-good factor at the football club, and you're right. Um, they've got something to hold on to. I think they are ahead of where Mikel Arteta would have thought they would be for this time. But once you're there, you want to you want to remain there, and um, it's it's a great opportunity for them to really kick on. I agree with Arteta. If they if they win this, we know they're they're in amongst it for the title, of course. Yeah. But I think this will further cement it. All joking aside, Tim, mm. you scored in a North London derby. You know what it feels like to play in this fixture, to score in this fixture. Yeah. Any better feeling? No, no. Uh, I'm from North London as well, so it means extra special for me. You know, my dad was an Arsenal fan and um, I remember scoring that goal in 2000, uh, going up to the players' lounge after and I looked at my dad and I thought something seriously wrong had happened. Uh, you know, not did a smile. Did he do that as well? He not didn't a smile on his you, face. Did he? he didn't know. He didn't know whether to be happy for me or not. And <laughs> in the end, he decided not to be. So, uh, no, it's 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 in you. You know, when I went to Tottenham, the first fixture I looked for was when are we playing Arsenal. Um, it's you know, I've got my hands are sweating now thinking about the game. I mean, it's just an incredible fixture. Um, it's what every Tottenham player and every Arsenal player want want to be involved in. Um, last season, they blew it, Arsenal. Uh, uh, why I lane, you know, new Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, sorry. Um, and he blew it. You know, the opportunity he's finishing the top four and, and obviously Tottenham nicked that spot. Mm. Um, so it's revenge for them. They need revenge now. And like you, you're absolutely right. They're in magnificent form. I think Mikel's done a brilliant job. They've got a very talented young group of players. Uh, Jesus is going to be a huge miss, but Eddie and Ketia has come in and done brilliantly. Um, so I've got nothing but credit for, for Arsenal. I have to be honest, they've done brilliantly. Um, but I just think Harry Kane's still on fire. You know, Erlen Haaland, obviously, scoring the goals has, has taken the shine off of Harry Kane, but he's still having a magnificent season. And he loves scoring against Arsenal, so hopefully he can do that again tomorrow. Mm -hmm. All the questions about Arsenal since Gabriel Jesus' injury, Karen, have been about whether they've got enough goals in the team without him there, where the players around <clears throat> in those attacking positions can step up and fill the void. Mm. And they've proven that they can. So what's going to stop them winning the title? Only themselves, really, that belief. There will be a point in the season where, they'll, where they might lose a game. Mm. Um, and they'll have to be resilient. They'll have to be mentally tested. You've seen it with Manchester City previously. Um, but you'll have a little bit of a blip, but it's how you respond. Yeah. And, and Tim mentioned they're a young group. And, you know, Mikel Arteta is he's experienced in the coaching world, but managerial, they will have a blip. So how do they respond? So that could be their own Achilles heel. And that's why I said themselves. But in terms of playing, they've got everything. They've got the mentality. Defensively, they look strong. Saliba is the second quickest defender in the league. So they're solid at the back. Goalkeeper. And then Ketia, they've got goals, wingers, they've got everything. So mm. for me, it's only them that will, will beat themselves. As you've explained already, Tim, you don't need to have anything else to get you up for this <clears> game. It's a North London derby. But how are Tottenham going to approach this game and what Tottenham are we going to see? Because there's been such a mixed bag of results this season and yeah. the performances 
haven't been all that great from Antonio Conte's side. No, you're right. I think the, the results have papered over the cracks at, largely at times because of the quality of Harry Kane. Kulisevsky has mm. been outstanding since he's come to the club. Um, Son's had a difficult season, but it looks like hopefully he's scored a few goals recently and picked up. So some confidence there. Um, ben Tancor, I think, is another good signing, what Conte's made. Um, but they've been poor to watch, really poor. You know, it's not beat around the bush. You know, they're, they're ugly to watch. Um, but if they get the job done and they finish in the top four, then it's a successful season again. They're still in the FA Cup. They've got an opportunity there. Um, still in the Champions League. So you'd have to say Conte's done a very good job. Wherever he's managed, he's never been pretty to watch. He's never been fantastic to watch, but he's a serial winner. I just hope that he can lift a trophy with Tottenham. He's got it all to do. Mm. You know, the, the manner of the defeat um, last it, uh, early on in the season was it was just it was embarrassing really it was a football lesson what Arsenal give Tottenham so almost more pressure when you're at home in front of your home fans because they don't like to tolerate it. they will tolerate it if you win a football match in the end but if you play the style of football what Tottenham have been largely dishing up this season and you don't win the football match then you get very disgruntled fans and then it's not only this result then it's you know, it festers into into many other results. They've got tough fixtures coming up, Man City away as well. So mm. their their season rests on a very, very strong month and I think it starts from, from Sunday. They need to start winning this football match. They, they've never beat anyone head-to-head -head at the moment in the top four. Mm. You know, anyone they've played, they've played Man United, they get beat. The Chelsea, they drew against a 95th-minute equaliser. You know, Man City, they, they had a, um, it was uh, cancelled that game. Liverpool, they get beat. They can't beat the head to head. If they want to finish in the top four, they have to start beating the teams in and around them. And at the moment, they've struggled to do it. Mm. Tim mentioned Harry Kane, though, is that the bright spark in this Tottenham side, as he always is, Karen, mm. is two goals off scoring 200 Premier League goals. I mean, it's amazing. Incredible. These records that he continues to break for Tottenham and, and for England as well. I think he's got 17 goals all competitions this season. And, and Tim's right, if Arlen wasn't here, I think we'd all be going, Harry Kane, Harry Kane, Harry Kane. Um, but again, he, I mean, look at those stats. The stats, the stats don't lie and he could finish Tottenham this weekend. If he, if he scores one, he equals Jimmy Greaves. If he scores two, he obviously surpasses it as Tottenham all-time goal scorer, which is unbelievable yeah. um, and that's what he, he's been chasing for a very very long time um, and there's no doubt he, he will break that record but um, you know like Tim said I watched the game against Crystal Palace I could not believe they won 4-0 watched it and I blinked and I thought how has it happened and mm. it's because of Harry Kane yeah it really is he's singly single-handedly dragging them through yeah okay. in the cup as well against yeah. Port Portsmouth you know, a lower tier side over here in the UK, nothing happening. All of a sudden, he plays a one-two edge of the box, puts it in the top corner. The kid's incredible. Mm -hmm. Prediction then, Tim? I'm going to go with a Tottenham 2-1 victory. Karen? 2-2. Two -two. We have a full fixture list this weekend then, and it all kicks off tonight with Aston Villa against Leeds. And, of course, it is Derby weekend. Manchester United against Manchester City kicks things off tomorrow, and you've got there to finish us all off on Sunday. It's Spurs against Arsenal. We are going to talk about the Manchester Derby a little bit later on in the show, but first, Arsenal are five points clear at the top, although... It could be two by the time they play. The, the thing mm. is, this weekend, and under the pressure, yeah. even though you said we'll speak about the Manchester derby later, the context of this weekend means you can't really speak about the One. North London derby yeah. without the importance what, yeah. of it without the other. Mm. Um, big game. What we've seen recently in the North London derby, especially, though, is that the home side tends to fare better, right? So I think Tottenham are unbeaten in their last eight mm. against Arsenal at home. Um, but it's a, it's, a, it's a big one. Tottenham have started the season badly in the sense of starting games badly. They can't right? afford to they start. Afford no, to because where we've seen them, their second half performances be so much better, they are probably not going to be allowed that by Arsenal yeah, if Arsenal, Arsenal go one or two nil up. up. Yeah, yeah, and then the game's done, up. really. But the guy you've got to be careful is that it's Harry Kane, man. Yeah. He loves scoring against Arsenal. He don't Arsenal. mind scoring he in the derby. He doesn't mind. He don't mind scoring against Arsenal. I think he's too off being Tottenham's all-time goal scorer. So he could just turn it up again. Do you know what I mean? And I think he's had a good season, 15 goals. But because of what harlan has been doing, yeah. we've just gone, it's just gone over our heads. But he, he could be on fine form and it could just be, you know what I mean? Harry Kane, two off, yeah. uh, scoring 200 Premier League goals, which is a truly 
remarkable and outstanding oh, achievement. It's only Wayne Rooney and Alan Shearer now. And Andrew Mentz as well. You're, you're a goalie. You don't score goals. Yeah, and five don't... aside goal. Yeah. <laughs> five aside doesn't go. I didn't know still. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see if Arsenal can handle the pressure, though, because we saw last season when they were under a little bit of pressure towards the end, they just couldn't could handle it. You can say it, they crumbled. And with Manchester City chasing them, so it this... feels like their mentality may be different this time. Mm. Yeah, but you know, when you, it's different chasing as opposed to being the ones chased, right? Mm. So True. they know that lead can get cut down to two points. Yeah. And then they know that they're effectively one game away from being second. Mm. I know they won't be thinking like that because they'll be looking forward. But listen, they've got a lot. They, they've, they've had a brilliant start to this mm. season, exceeded not only their expectations, but I think the fans and even the neutrals with regards to Arsenal. Nobody expected them to be five points clear at this nope. stage in the season. And everything, and Derby, Derby wife, they've, they've, they've won every single London Derby this season, including yes. Tottenham at, at the Emirates. So, is it written in the stars? Mm. If there's a game that you don't want to lose, though, and I mean, coming into this, I think they would have rather it been anyone but Tottenham, especially yeah. the way that Tottenham have been a little bit indifferent. But you just know, like, this is the game that especially because Arsenal are top, Spurs are going to be so, so up for this. I think it's, I think it's going to be a wicked game. I think it's going to be a great game. Who are you game. going for? Ooh. Ooh. For Arsenal, you know. I'm going to sit on the fence and go for a draw. Wow! <laughs> You're wearing leopard prints. You've got to be more confident than that. <laughs> I mean, never before in the history of punditry has someone's leopard print trousers been material to a result of a football game. <laughs> Oh my god! I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Though know, I think I think Arsenal. You think Arsenal? It's like a, it's like I a, think most a people will say Arsenal as well. I would say to Arsenal two one. Okay, I, I wouldn't mind the draw as long as <laughs> Arsenal don't win. Very special thanks to Spurs play uh, for that bit of content, and we can now uh, catch up with Jeff, who's the Spurs fan who featured in that piece. Uh, Jeff, uh, welcome to the weekend. Um, what's it like being a Spurs fan out in Mumbai? Well, uh, thanks to the guys at Mumbai Spurs, it's, uh, it's a really good thing. I mean, I came to India about three years ago, as I said on the, the video clip, for family reasons. And uh, I used to watch a lot of the games um, at home alone because I didn't think there were any other Spurs fans in, uh, in this country, let alone in, uh, in Mumbai. And then, as I said, somebody who I know, who uh, is a presenter on one of the uh, football channels here in India, he put me in touch with a guy who runs India Spurs. They said they had a branch in Mumbai. They invited me along to one of the games. And since uh, since then, I've been watching regularly with uh, with those guys when I'm in it. And Jeff. Yeah, so uh, it's been really good. It's bringing the atmosphere of White Hart Lake here to India. It sounds amazing. And it's not only people from the UK that are the, that the um, Mumbai Spurs group have hosted. It's people from Australia, Italy, Iran, the US. Spurs fans have come from everywhere, haven't they? Yeah, I mean, it's mostly guys who are Indian-based and Bombay-based. So it's great to see that uh, our club has such a following thousands and thousands of miles away from home. Uh, but there are guys that come from Spain and, as you say, Italy and all over who are visiting India and are happy to come and watch the games with us. But uh, I was really pleased to find out in India, um, you know, Spurs are, are, are so widely followed. And we have a much greater following than some of the, the bigger clubs like Manchester United and Liverpool, who you, you'd expect to have a, uh, a huge following abroad. Uh, but I, I think our supporters club here in Bombay is far more active than some of those uh, other uh, club supporters group. So I'm I'm really pleased about that. Yes, Jeff. Obviously, it's the North London derby this weekend. <laughs> like, how manic is it going to be out there? Well, we've got uh, a screening coming up here locally in Bombay. Uh, at the last one, we had uh, over 100 people there, I think, at the screening. And we had a section of Arsenal fans. So that was also quite fun uh, with a bit of back and forth banter. Obviously, the result wasn't so fun, but uh, in general, there's a lot of good humour between uh, rival supporters. Generally, at the games, it's mostly Spurs fans, but for the big games, uh, like uh, I think also Chelsea this season, we had a, a small section of away fans there, and we have a good bit of back and forth with them. Uh, but the Arsenal away game this year wasn't great, so we're hoping that we have a much better result this weekend. Nice one, Jeff. Just before we let you go, OK, we've got an in-house retro football shirt expert. 
Uh, I see that you're donning uh, something special from yesterday. Oh, yeah. Uh, from Spurs. Um, uh, Mentz, what do you think of this Tottenham shirt? I can't lie, Jeff, you're my guy, man. Just for wearing that shirt, <laughs> you're my guy. Automatically. <laughs> I love it. The Hummel, the Hummel, I love it, I love it. It's a nice shirt. It's very nice. And he wears it well. He wears it well. Away, this one. And he wears no, it well. And he knows, and he knows where it's, when it's from, yeah. so I like that. Top, we like that. Top mark, Jeff, top mark. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. I was still watching Spurs at that time. <laughs> uh, Thank Jeff, you, Jeff. Top man. See you later. See you later, Jeff. Uh, right, guys, are you ready? It is quiz question time.